Protoss player. Just checking to see if maybe Wikipedia could back me up on that. Ah, I, that's that's how I wrote it, so I'm, so I'm gonna say it. Oh. In the bottom right is the red Zerg. It is Stefano. In the top left is the blue Protoss. It is Hell Razor. Raising Hell by potentially beating one of Europe's well, all StarCraft's favorite players. Not that it would be that much of an upset. Stefano is eh, kind of going in and out of, you know, potential kind of like true comebacks and then all just being a streamer and then other times just just kind of hanging around going to events and then back to maybe being damn good and then you know kind of it's just it's uh, hard to pinpoint exactly where Stefano is and at the time that he was particularly good he still had uh, major trouble with ZVZ it's been something that's plagued him for basically the entirety of Legacy of the Void and it really called his uh tournament results and, uh, you know, it meant that he could have gotten a round of eight, maybe, for WCS, but instead he met, I don't know, sort of, or, or Snoot or something like that, right? I was going to say Serral, but there's other reasons that Savannah would lose to Serral, besides being a ZVZ. Although, I believe last year's Leipzig, there was... He did take a game off of Serral in a ZVZ. That, at this point, is literally a year ago. So, don't know what happened in game number one. Don't even know what map, although other cast is trying to figure that one out. Eh, I really don't know. I really, like, I mean, of course it could have been a two base all in or a fake, kind of fake third base all in from the Protoss. It could have been an unsuccessful Hydra Ling all in from Stefano. Like, I don't think Hellraiser is going to get a potential 2 0 here just because he cheeses. I think he is just perhaps a better player. Stefano is up, down, up, down. Question mark, question mark. I would love to see Stefano in the round of 32 for WCS, but... Of the people that we recognize and that we kind of assume will make it through with 24 slots available in these qualifiers, eh, Stefano might be the one that we're like, oh, he's he didn't make it through? Like, oh, shit. But I think he will. Maybe not today, but certainly Sunday. And, and maybe still today. Not much to talk about so far. Just a Stargate opener. Oracle popping out after the Phoenix, which is already taking care of the Overlord. We've still got a full scout. I mean, you got to see all the gases taken. Well, presumably. And, um... It, it knew it was going to die. It knew it was going to happen when it was the first Overlord on this on this map. It was like, well, shit. I guess I'm going to die soon. We have an Evolution Chamber on the way. I guess, speaking of things that could have happened last game, it could have been a double Stargate. But this game's not. It's gonna go into Robo. He does add on plus one melee in it. That being so quick, that's what I expected. Maybe a little bit later with the Roach Warren would have been Missile. So, we're gonna have some quickly upgraded Lings, and eventually Banelings and Hydras. Whereas Hellraiser is just gonna use this little tag team of units to get a couple drones, get some decent scouting. We already had Spore Color being made. This one had to be... Cancel. There we go. If they don't need a second one. And technically, you know, you maybe don't even need one here if the two queens are here, but we see what happens when you you underestimate that. The Phoenix lifts one of your queens up, suddenly you're you're regretting it. So it is much safer. All locations having a spore crawler, even an extra queen in the main base, and another extra queen being made of the natural. Ah no, just just one to inject. Charge is on the way pretty quickly here. We're still on two bases for the Protoss player. Stefano trying to get sight on when exactly, if, right, if there's going to be a third Nexus. 
and so far there isn't but there is the move out to at least show that hellraiser wants to get a nexus and i i don't doubt that he will i do somewhat doubt there'll be a lot of probes on it uh in a minute i'm thinking there's more so going to be charge lots in stefano's face it's gonna go up to six gateways which is a totally normal amount to to also just produce off of three bases as you get a third it's kind of that choice of do you get the the gateways first or you get the, the nexus first and you just want to get the gateways first you're either defending it all in sure okay that's that's true or you're going for an attack in this case you want to pair up with the archons but they are found by these links not quite with plus one but enough of them with the full surround to get a kill on an archon that is a big find right there for our zerg player He's got some decent creep spread already and already onto a fourth base. He knows about the intention of Hellraiser to take a third base. Still wants to be keeping tabs on whether or not it is, you know, going to be saturated. And wants to make sure that Warp Prism doesn't try and warp in charge lots. But apparently by killing that Archon, Hellraiser might have just given up on the idea entirely. Might not have really bothered to do the idea anyways. The charge has since... I want to say he stopped chronoing it because it seemed to be on the way rather hastily and then suddenly it wasn't. But yeah, maybe there's another chrono into it. He would have been able to pair everything up with the Archon drop. And you do that against someone who's being kind of greedy about their Banelings. They don't have a Baneling us yet, so they haven't made their Banelings. You can do a lot of damage. Well, I didn't use the Warp Prism to warp them in immediately. He does now have Charge and Charge Lots on the way over. Second Archon joins the fray. Banelings are caught a little off guard. Don't want to go on top of that Archon. Stefano has a run by the third base, only a shield batter to help out, so those probes are goners, and Hellraiser still really wants to execute this attack. He has plus one on the way, so there is a macro game in mind, even if his pro production has uh, been stalled out a little bit here. If he can get the third Nexus, or third hatchery killed, that would be obviously fantastic, but that's yeah, a bit of a question mark. More Banelings have finished up here. War Prism, don't know exactly what, oh, that was, ooh, ooh, no, how did it even survive? That was tagged on top of the Banelings, I guess, to keep track of them, but that was a very bold thing to do. Things suddenly turn in favor of Stefano, who saves the hatchery, has a only a low HP War Prism to deal with. Suddenly, the two queens and a Spore Crawler have set up do actually kill the damn thing when it tries to harass later on. And, of course, dealt with both the Archons and the Zealots. Yeah, you chain out with the Banelings, so that's gas. Oop, pops off the War Prism. But that was, at the end of the day, a decent cleanup, even if it took a little longer than Safana was hoping for because he got into this third base and was able to get some serious probe damage done. Well, somewhat serious. <laughs> he killed eight. But there wasn't there weren't that many probes to begin with, so that's my reasoning. It looked like a lot because it was the entire mineral line. Which was eight probes. Hmm. Storm's now on the way. The games will continue. Stefano is not immediately able to just pounce back and, and kill Hellraiser for the audacity that is a charge on attack. No, 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 no. The army supply is looking what you would expect from TV ZVP, sorry. And with Storm on the way, they certainly can change quickly to Hellraiser's advantage. They could, but it doesn't mean that they will. Attack to the north side first, but we still have this attack off to the bottom side. It's going to be Banelings. The Lings... Oh, yeah. Yeah, plus two is done. Oh, yeah. Those Banelings are going to get some pretty big pops. Oh, it's oversaturated as well. He hadn't put his guys in, a, in the gases yet, although I guess they would have died too. It's still enough probe to do so. They're even going to be able to splash on top of a decent amount of Zealots. So really, really, really good stuff there. Boom. Suddenly, eight probes turn to 32. Every single probe. That was a perfectly saturated base. If the gases were also taken and he killed every single one, that's that's effective. That's good. So it looks like Stefano's gonna be able to tie up this match. <laughs> that's what I would guess. I don't wanna say Hellraiser is out of it yet. He still has Storm and he still has a decent army. So just trying to keep his head down and continue producing probes, but one Bane Lang pops off three more. And Stefano will keep on doing this until maybe there's a stasis trap or an Archon over there and Hellraiser is now keeping his army over there, but oh no. By keeping his army over there, he had nothing blocking the natural, and he just taps out. This game was already looking bad for him. Dealing with a run by was not something he was truly... Not that he wasn't equipped to deal with it. He had the army to deal with it, but it would have dragged him out of position, and it would have taken way too long. Hellraiser can rush with Robo and Shield Batteries. Oh, jeez, I didn't even think about 
bringing back the old cannon rush. All right, so now we have a bit more information. Well, I was hoping to see Stefano just really dominate in the second game. Not because of everything against Hellraiser, but I think we're all somewhat cheering for Stefano to come back in a form. And as far as the non-ZVZ matchups go, it does seem that he, he usually has a handle on them. Only being outplayed by, you know, the top tier players you would expect. So, unless Hellraiser got, like, much, much better, I was hoping that Stefano wasn't... I don't know. Looking to... Too bad in this qualifier, and that was a strong, typical ZVP performance. It makes sense that he had trouble against the Cannon Rush Shield Battery shenanigans. I'm gonna guess on Blue Shift, maybe? <laughs> Ron's really in fall now. It's all tied up now. Oh my god. Oh, I forgot that was a thing. So I think they, they put this in and then forgot to take it out because I don't think they use it anymore, but they would have like the player portrait and information on it. But they don't use it anymore, so I wonder why it's still here. Uh... <laughs> okay. In the bottom left is the red Zerg. It is Stefano. In the top right, as the blue Protoss, it is Hellraiser, and the air, there it is. If you see a pile on the high ground in this matchup, you gotta know. You gots to know that it's a cannon rush. Although sometimes they put it on the bottom uh, low grounds, and they cannon rush as we would expect with just cannons into a natural. That that does happen, so. But if they put it on the high ground, then you know for sure, and you also know that it's going to be a dedicated cannon rush, since they really aren't planning on taking a Nexus. They're planning on building their production right in your face. So this Overlord goes a little scary south. Maybe you could have missed the pylon if it was over here, but it does see the pylon, and that's what it was meant for. That's why he didn't send it somewhere else across the map with the first one, right? It wants to see how the cannon rush is going down, what type of cannon rush it is, because this one is going to take a long time to get to this side of the map. So now he knows. Seeing the gateway, instant boom, he knows what's up. He already went for a pool first, probably aware that on one of the smaller maps that we have, that this would be the case. If it's Parasite, I'm not saying that the Protoss can't do it, it's just that we see it, uh, I think, more rarely <laughs> on Parasite. So, pool first only gives you the start. With the low ground that Hellraiser set up, it's not exactly easy to take care of things, nip it in the bud nice and quick. In fact, it's, nearly, it's basically impossible for us to know what they're doing, because they're going to blow it off, as you see here, with a gateway. So one drone or two links punching this cannon wouldn't have done very much. So you have to figure out how to deal with the high ground problem. So roaches are 99% of the time the way to go. We do see some people attempt to Ling Baneling bust this sound, and it's worked once or twice. But Ravagers, I guess you should be very specific, are the way to go. They have the extra range, they have the corrosive bile to burst down the cannons, even if there are shield batteries, and they don't take extra damage versus the eventual immortals. So... There are other ways to deal with this, too. I, I guess we should throw it out there while we see the temporary lull in action. The Zealot being surprisingly annoying. Um, if you get drones out on the map, you can try and, and hatch over here and hope that they take a long time to build a cannon. You could try and get a third base slash natural, whatever you want to call it, over here and, and have multiple ways to attack into the uh, cannon rusher. But most of the time, you're stuck on one base and it is about what you do here. So Ravager's where they go. Clem got 2 0 by Blue Cheese. Well, I said that might be a good game, but I wasn't really expecting a 2 0. Was that, was that a TPT? Am I was right about that? I 
As a Zerg player, I've never had to know for a fact how many Crows of Bows it takes to down a cannon, but... It's five, I guess? And he just lost the Ravager. Not supposed to happen, bit of a mistake there. But I don't know if... Like, Hellraiser doesn't... Well, it doesn't feel as scary as it should, but I can't... I, I guess my, my reasoning as to why is I don't see a, a lot of stuff up on the high ground. It is a lot more about getting to Immortals and a War Prism, I know, but you still want to make sure that they can't bust through. And if that fifth Ravager hadn't died, and these cannons are under some serious fire. Even with the fifth Ravager dying, the cannons are actually being pushed back here. Shield batteries may be a little bit too late, maybe not enough of them. Some variation of that. Nice focus fire on top of the cocoon, but four Ravagers still alive, and now the high ground taken, retaken by Stefano means that this is not looking so hot. A mortal war prism can do a lot of work. You know, never just think that you've got it because you dealt with the cannon rush, but it it it's kinda it's kinda the case. Like if you deal with the cannon rush, you take all the shield batteries, uh, one slip up by the the war prism or the immortal micro, and suddenly you do win the game. So Hellraiser really needs to get these back up and running, and I think he needs to get more as well. Oh, he's fully saturated. I decided I don't know. I guess I'm surprised he's chill batteries back here. I guess that's what's what's happening instead of over here. As I was saying, Ravagers have that extra range to deal with the Immortal, and they don't take extra damage from the Immortal, even if they have slightly less health. So they are what you need. They're expensive, for sure. Stefano can only afford so many, even with the, you know, his injects, he can only afford so many Roaches and then the tournament Ravagers, but he's getting there, and he hasn't lost too many. A very juicy pylon, but there is one backup. Still powering the Robo, most importantly, and there's another backup one as well. So Vano has to be careful not to get too, too, too overconfident. Kukukuchu. Um, as he is starting to bleed off Ravagers, if he had eight Ravagers right now, this is no contest. He also would have had three Queens if he hadn't lost those. So there certainly have been, I, I think I'll call them overconfidence issues. Like, he, he knows how to micro them, but you know, maybe, maybe there's a case of underestimating the power and maybe other cases he didn't mean to micro, he thought he just had it, you know, hard to say. But if Stefano goes down to this after a strong hold, after breaking the natural, that would be a big bummer. Apparently the last time this happened, he almost held it, so maybe it looks quite similar to this. In which case, it just is an extra bummer to lose something so... So similar. You know, two times. The best of three is supposed to give you that edge if they're just a one-trick pony, and if it doesn't, then you... It feels bad, man. You start to feel bad, man. Now Hellraiser with two immortals, three immortals, sorry, and a warp prism, but the point is something to fill the warp prism. Can really put all at once into the shield batteries. It's an observer to help out with the high ground vision, something that Stefano can't take care of because he never went into a lair. To his defense, he didn't think he really would have to. Um, some Zerg players do make it a point to get to there and have Overseers with surveillance mode, and maybe some of those Zerg players do like tricky Nidus worms, but Stefano thought that this would all be one off the back of his hatchery, so no, nothing to deal with the Spore Crawler, not even a, not a Spore Crawler to deal with the Observer, Black, and now the Immortal is at four, really starting to pound away at this army, but Stefano has also recuperated from his earlier losses. He has three queens, trying to target fire the Warp Prism, but the shield batteries are up, and that is the deadliest thing about having this natural taken over by the Protoss, is that it just seems like all your efforts are worth worthless, they just don't do anything. But eventually, if your micro's good, and their micro's a little off, you do start to overpower them. And as good as shield batteries are, you can only have so many. You know, he's, he's still placing more, and every second that ticks by is more energy for each individual shield battery. But the hope is, eventually, you do get one immortal chopped down right before the shield battery gets its energy back. You do get it before it's picked up by the, the warp prism. Or you find the Protoss a little overconfident, and they move up a ramp to cross the Biles, which seems to have almost happened about two or three times here. Hellraiser wants to get the victory, he wants to be able to punch through every single unit here, but his Immortals aren't doing the nasty damage we expect from them. They don't do extra versus Psionic, they don't do extra versus the uh, Ravager, non-armored. So... It's still taking some time, but now we're at... Oh my lordy, six Immortals, guys, with tons of shield batteries. I'm afraid Stefano might have... I mean, he thought he broke Hellraiser's back, but it might be the opposite, but the Concave always working out in Stefano's favor. He always takes a good engagement when Hellraiser tries to move up the ramp. 
We now have Hellraiser onto a robotics bay, which is absolutely shocking. You don't usually see that. Disruptor is one of the matches that's gonna pop out. Now the queen's gonna fall here. Now the queen almost falls. A lot of these immortals are starting to get a little low. Oh, 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 oh. One goes down. But with another one popping forward, it's still six. Oh god, Fear Dragon's here. Of course he is. Double immortal? Wait, what? He had, he had he got two robots at some point? Oh my oh my lord. Oh my god. He has the minerals. He barely has the gas. Disruptor is on the way, and that's gonna be so brutal. With the, the micro, I mean It's not it's not that easy. You might accidentally miss micro your disruptor, pick it up before the shot hits type deal, and oh hold on here. Another immortal went down? I think two immortals went down. Cause that was six, right? Oh no, just one more. I can't count apparently. Mm -hmm. Almost running back into the Crows of Biles. There are so many at this point. Talking about five Immortals, there are ten Ravagers and four Queens. Stefano has been pretty good about keeping a, a solid Queen count. Not like continuously making them, but but having them while also being able to afford Rogers and Ravagers. A little supply blocks right now. He does finally add on a Spore Crawler and actually even a Lair here. So that will help out against what would... What, what, is usually a pesky observer, but I guess that died. It did die, and it died to a another spore crawler. I didn't see that it was repositioned. Resources is lost, still in favor of Hellraiser. Oh, they also help out against the war prism, I should be clear. He's gonna try and save the spore crawler, so misses a shot on the war prism. Not that it really mattered with all the shield batteries. I don't know what you do against the disruptors. You you basically just hope. Okay, yeah, nothing. You know, 